I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son podcast. You know, we do this podcast for a a big reason. We do it because we want people to find out who they are in Jesus Christ. We do it so that other people can find out what God is saying to them, for them, and about them in his word. And, and that's what we all strive to put out on the on these videos that the word of God gets put out all over this planet to further God's kingdom, to to help the world understand and to know through him, through God's word and all that he says, we can overcome. We are overcomers through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Now, to this tonight I want to uh talk to you about something the lord gave me a scripture yesterday and i've i've been debating on it not really debating but meditating on it about what god would have me to say because you know this is very important that that everyone come to know and realize how much god's word is able to do and will do in their life if they'll just take it and believe it you know, I, John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, I had some people talk about it at the jail. A man spoke up and said, "We, I need to hear more from God. And the Lord just, just brought this up in my heart. said, you know, give him this, this scripture, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I told him, I said, if you want to hear from God, I asked him, I said, do you want to hear from him? He said, yes, absolutely. And and he was sincere about it. He just wasn't, you know, telling me what I wanted to hear. But, But I gave him that scripture. I said, when you will take this Word... And, and read it and hear it. Read it out loud to yourself and, and hear what God is saying through his word. I said, it'll change your life. And he understood that, but he had never thought, I need to, I need to get in, in his word. I think he was looking more for a feeling, more for a, a, a push, instead of just simply taking God's word for what it said. But this scripture I want to I bring Tonight, it comes out of Psalms 89, and it's uh, 89, Psalms 89, 34. It says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the things which is gone out of my lips. Now, if there's anything in this world that I want in my life, now I'm, I'm talking to Stacy. I'm not talking to anybody listening to this podcast or listen to this FaceTime live video, but I'm talking to me. And I come to the conclusion a long time ago, if I would take this verse and 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 receive it for myself, that God's not going to alter. He said, I will not alter or will not break my covenant. Let me read it again. <laughs> It says, My covenant I will not break nor alter the things which has gone out of my lips. Uh, when I read that, it brings me straight back to Mark eleven twenty two, when Jesus said it. He said, Have faith in God. I lived a lot of years having faith in what I done and and how good that I could be and when I fell short my faith was gone because I had faith in, in, in man's traditions and what I'd been taught instead of believing what Jesus said. said, have faith in God and speak that faith. Hey, Jesus, or, or God said it in Psalms. He said, look, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to break what I have told you. If, if God says that by your stripe, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed, that's exactly what we are. And, and when I come to that conclusion in my life, it, it set me free from, the, from all, the, all the doubt and the fear that, that is thrown at us through just daily life. It don't, it don't matter what you do in this world, something 
is going to be used to, to make you doubt God. And, and I promise you, when you get it in your heart and, and take God for what he says and, say, and don't take anything else but take God for what he says and believe what he says. You know, the Bible says it, the faith of a grain of mustard seed you can see trees, sycamine trees, ripped up by the roots. Well, you say, well, I've never seen that happen in my life. I'm going to tell you something. I, a lot of people look at that, 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 uh, that seed as the size of it. And I'm not disagreeing with that point. But I, w I want you to think about something today. What is the, uh, a grain of mustard seed? And the Lord gave me this years ago, and I'm not a, a botanist. I have no idea uh, whether this is true or a fact or anything, but I, the Lord gave me this years ago. He said, if you plant mustard, anywhere you plant it, it's going to come up mustard. I've, 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 I've heard in the past that mustard cannot be cross-pollinated with anything. It'll always be mustard. And, and, and what the Lord has given me about that seed, it's not necessarily the size of that seed, but it's, a, it, it's ability to never be changed from what it is. Now, you can take that for, for corn or beans or tomatoes or anything else. If I go out here and, and plant a mustard seed and it, it grows, it's, gonna, it's never going to be beans or potatoes or, or corn or anything like that. It's going to come up a mustard seed. So look at it the way the Lord gave me what the, what the Lord gave me in that is that little, that faith of a grain of mustard seed is unchanging. What does what that faith bring? That faith brings change when we start holding our faith in God over that seed that we have. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? We get in a place where we doubt God just because things around us look different than what we want to happen in our, in our hearts and in our minds. Uh, the, 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 I, have, I have struggled with things like this for the biggest part of my adult life up until six or seven years ago because I was taught to look at, at the, the, just my surroundings and what things were, were, how things were happening and going in, in my life. And as long as things were going good, I was fine. But when, when something come against me that, that, that was detrimental, to my well-being, I, I, I stumbled at it. I staggered at it. The Bible says that, that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. And, and Psalm said, he, he said it, I'm going to read it one more time. It says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. Now, if we can take that faith that I'm talking about, that mustard seed size of faith, and take it for what it is, and that's unchanging. You, if you plant mustard, you're going to get mustard every time. If you have faith in God, you're going to get exactly what God has spoken in his word. I'm convinced of that. I saw that happen in my life in January of this year. And, and I, I, I have come to the conclusion that everything else works the same way. Everything else works to the point of the faith that we have in Him, in His Word. Uh, so many times in my young adult life, I would sit in church and I'd scratch my head and think, there's got to be more to a Christian life than what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, and for goodness sake, what I'm feeling. I didn't realize that to just walk by faith, I'd been taught to walk by feelings. You say, well, how do I, how do I get that faith? How do I get to a point in my life that I believe God over any circumstance that I'm living in? 
you get to that point in your life by saturating yourself with God, with his word, with his word, and, and taking, taking his word and consuming it every day of your life like, a, like, like you would a good meal multiple times a day. Now, I'm, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that you got to run around with a Bible stuck to your forehead every day and, and acting like somebody that's lost their mind. That's not what I'm getting at. But I want you to understand something. If you will take some quality time. I, I heard an inmate say this over at the jail, and it's true. It's true. And he, he said, if we'll just give God 10% of our time, that we have in a day. And, and he wasn't talking about waking hours. He went further than that and was talking about just two hours and 40 minutes, 24 hours, 10% of that time. If we'll give that time to God, to, to his word. And I said, boy, that's, that's really good. That's really what, what I needed to understand because over the years, I study God's Word. I study it daily. Get up every morning. I don't move until I get in God's Word and what and find out what He has for me to stand in and believe for that day. I, I do. I saturate myself with that. But when I come to understand what that inmate was telling me, he said, "Look, he said I I've got to I've got to give God as much as I can, and the least amount of time that I can give Him in His Word." Is ten percent. So if we're looking, we're if we're looking at building, strengthening our faith, why not take a time and put it into our hearts, and and continually put it into our hearts. If we're not if we're not studying it, if we're not hearing it, we're meditating on it. We're we're in a place in in our hearts that we walk through life and 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 compare. The situation that we're going through to God's word. That's I promise you. In January, when I went through what I went through, when I started coming out of that fog, the what what was in my heart, the abundance of what was in my heart came out of my mouth. And I started speaking what God had given me so many years ago that by the stripes of Jesus Christ I was healed. And I started speaking that, started saying that, and, and believed it in my heart. Because I promise you, what's in your heart is going to come out during crisis. It's going to come out when, when, when things go bad. What's right here, what has, been, what has been sown into your heart will come out. And I thank God every day for what he had planted in my heart over the years, long before I dealt with what I was dealing with. And when I, when I started coming out of that fog and, and what God had given me in my heart started flowing out of my mouth, and, and at the time, there, it, you couldn't hardly understand what I was saying. It was, it was horrible. To think that I was in the place that I was, my wife said. Yes, yeah, said I couldn't understand a word you were saying. Said you sound like somebody been deaf out their entire life. But I, we, and she and I, she understood what I was saying, and we agreed on it. That things weren't wasn't going to stay the way they were. And glory to God, nothing that I done, but everything that He done. Glory to God, I walked out of that hospital speaking I, you're talking to some i'm speaking to you today by the glory and the grace of my lord and savior jesus christ for what he done for me and and the thing of it is god's no respecter of person so if he done it for me he'll do it for you he'll do it for anybody that will believe him and have that unchanging mustard seed like faith that unchanged, I don't care what I see, feel, or hear. I'm going to believe what God said, and I'm going to stand on it. There's millions of people all over this planet that live their life defeated, 
upset, anxiety-ridden. Just I'm talking about stress running out their ears because of what's going on around them. And I promise you, I know this is just as well as I know that the, that the sun's going to come up in the east in the morning, going to set in the west, that God's word will free them from that stress and anxiety. I know it. I know it. I know it. Why? Because I have took the time to, to saturate my heart with God's word. I've done away with religion and all the junk that religion carries and have started relying on what God's word has to say to me, for me, and about me. And I, I want to encourage you that tonight, if you will take God's word for what it says, you can see the sycamine tree ripped up and thrown in to the sea. Why? Because of that little bit of faith that God has given us all to stand in. Faith in him. Faith in what he done. Faith in knowing that he loves us just as much as, as he does an innocent child. I, I had a hard time grasping that love, that unconditional love that God had for me for a lot of years. I never understood it. I, I understood it for, for people like our pastor or somebody like that, but I couldn't understand it for myself because I always felt like that I, I, I fell short everywhere I went. And, and I know today that was just a lack of word, God's word in my life, causing my faith to wane over the, over the issues that today I look at and think there's nothing to that. That that's nothing but a bump in the road. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And when I see something going wrong, something pops up that 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 panic wants to set in, that the devil says, Got you. You're you you've had it this time. No, that ain't what that ain't what I give in to. I rely on what I have put in my heart. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that God's going to not alter hit the words that's come out of his mouth. He's not going to break the covenant that he has given me and strengthened me with over the years. I feel like I need to go to Galatians, third, cha uh, third chapter, and, and just explain what God has shown me of who I am. I mean, I, I believe if I'm going to minister to anyone, I need to minister to them on how God wants me to minister to them. And most of the time, it's going to go through the avenue of what I've been through, what I have dealt with over my life. And when I come to read Galatians 3 and 29, 29 it says, If ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. You go back up into the 13th verse, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The 29th verse says, If I'm Christ, apostrophe is, if I'm in him, if he is my Lord and Savior, then I am Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promises that God has made Abraham. I, I've said this over and over on my podcast in the jail for years that, that spiritually a born-again Christian is a spiritual Jew. He, has, he is the seed of Abraham spiritually. I may not have any Jewish blood running, running through my veins, but spiritually, I have been grafted in to God's children, into God's family through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I can count on everything that God has ever spoken to Abraham 
for Abraham, for his, for his children, for his seed, because I am a seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ my Lord. And when, when you read Psalms 89, 34, and, and you think, my goodness, I can count on what God promised Abraham to be my own. And, and that he's going to watch after me. And if things come against me one way, they, they, have to, they have to flee. They have to scatter like a bunch of insects seven ways. And I stand on that. I believe that. I know it in my heart that, that, that God has got my back. And that's what I want to encourage you to stand in and believe. That God is for you. His word, has he has written down his word. The promises that he has written down is for you. And there, he's no respecter of person. What he'll do for one, he'll do for all. And he has written all these promises down so that we can stand in those promises no matter what comes about, no matter what sticks his ugly head up in your life and said, I'm going to badger you, I'm, I'm going to defeat you, and you say, no, no, that ain't happening. I'm a child of God. I have been promised what God has promised me in, this, in his word because that's God speaking to me. That's for me. You say that, and you say, I'm done. And you, like I said, you, you don't get that in that position without saturating your heart with with his truths. I I use that video so much when I when I go out and minister because I want people to know and understand that all the doubt, fear, and unbelief that religion and the world will throw at you, you can push it out of your life, but you have to push it out of your life through the word. You have to take God's word and saturate yourself to where it dilutes all that doubt and fear and unbelief and pushes it out of your life. And then when when you come again, when something comes against you that puts you in a place that you that you don't know you know which way to turn. I in January, I promise you, when I started seeing clearly and started understanding what was going on in my life. All that wanted to come out was God's word and his promises. And glory to God, I can, I can tell you today that he'll never fail me because I look back at that time and so many times before, he has watched over me and kept me because he's faithful to his word. He's faithful, and he said, I'm not going to alter what have, has crossed my lips. What I have given you, you can count on. And if there's ever a time in, this, in, 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 in world history that we need to be standing on the truth, it's today. Good night, this world has gone crazy. Uh, just nutty as fruitcakes running around. I, it, it's ama it amaze amazes me you go out into public and... Talk to people that are just completely out there like they don't even belong on this planet. What we need to be looking at? We need to be working and looking to, to stand on what God's Word says and believe it because I promise you, you go to looking around at what's going on around us in this world, in this nation, and, and you're, you think, don't let it get in, get in you. Don't let that craziness get in you. And you keep it out by, by keeping this right here and, and meditating on what God's Word says and giving God that time that He wants out of us to, to, to saturate us with the truth so that we can stand strong when we need to, that w so that we can stand up and say no. I ain't receiving all these lies that's being thrown at me. I'm going to stand on what God's Word says, and I'm going to see God take me through this. I promise you, he's, he's done it for me. He's done it for countless others, and he'll do it for anybody that'll believe him. Anyone that will take his Word and walk in his Word and believe what his Word says to them, for them, and about them. That is why I'm so adamant 
so adamant that people find out who they are in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in who he has made them to be through his sacrifice and not through their, not through their goodness, how, how good they can be, how moral or ethical they can be. How morals and ethics are, are a big part of a Christian life. Don't take this wrong. They're a big part of a Christian life, but morals and ethics do not merit us anything when it comes to salvation, or it, when it comes to where we stand in God's realm of seeing things. I promise you, it's who we are in Christ Jesus, where he has brought us to, who we abide in, and that is in what God has said to us, for us, and about us in his word. So I'm going to ask a question tonight. And I know there's a lot of born-again people that listen to this podcast, but I want you to understand that I'm believing, along with a, a whole lot of other people at, at Church Alive, believing that, that there's millions going to see this video and have their lives changed when the, the millions that see this video that are not born again and going to have their lives changed when they come to know and realize the love and the mercy and the grace that God has for them and the truth that he has for them to stand in and believe it. So I'm going to ask you tonight, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Because there's, there's millions out here that believe in Jesus. They believe that Christ died on the cross for their sins and was raised on the third day for their justification. They believe that. But they've never invited him in. They've never invited him into their heart and proclaimed him as Lord and Savior. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I'm asking you today, if you're not born again, invite Jesus into your heart. Invite him in to be Lord. Invite him in to be Lord of, of, of your life. And then get in, in God's promises and take God's promises and believe them. Stand in them. Know without a shadow of a doubt that they're for you. Because Acts 10, 34, Peter said it. He said, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. And he's not. He loves us all the same. When I come to understand, when the Lord spoke to my heart years ago, he said, son, I love the abortion doctor as much as I love the babies they're killing. It took me a long time to wrap my head around that. I, it really did. But today, I come to understand that there's not a man, woman, or child that walks the face of this earth that God, God does not love just as much as he uh, loves an innocent child. I want, you to, I want you to know that today. You may have walked through life and, and had so many things come against you and say, think that you're unworthy to ever expect anything out of God. What he'll do for us, he'll do for you. What he'll do for Billy Graham, he will do for you today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. I want to encourage you to download this, this phone app on our website. It's the-prodigalson.com and download all these these podcast that we've been doing to to teach people who they are in Jesus Christ. I thank God for all the people that are ch got, having their lives changed through what God has written down for them in his word. Now, I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you're doing, sowing into this, into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that will listen. I thank God for faithful partners that do just that. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. And if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today.